I'm Craig Beaumont Flynn. Welcome to Beyond the Design, a show that gives you a peek behind the curtain of the design industry and shares the stories of those that are the driving force behind it. Well, welcome to Beyond the Design. Today we have Douglas Friedman, photographer extraordinaire. Welcome to the show. Hi, it's it's good to finally be here with you. Thank you. Fantastic. So, Douglas, why don't you go ahead and start and tell us a little bit about your story? Uh, I mean, how far back do I go? <laughs> as far as back as you want. <laughs> no, um, well, what got you I interested mean, in I mean, photography? Photo- I mean, I think I, I had, I, you know, I had no, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Like, you know, I was, I think I was always anxious through high school, like not really knowing what You know, growing up as like like a Jewish kid on the Upper West Side of New York, it's like there's this this not so subtle conditioning, like you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to be a doctor. It's kind of a cliche, but it's all there. And and, you know, I I dabbled. I thought, okay, I'll be a lawyer, but, you know, I'll be a doctor. I tried the, you know, in college, like I'll take it, you know, I failed organic chemistry that wasn't going to. And so I knew those weren't the right paths for me. And but I, I still had no idea what I was going to do. So, you know, I, I, I studied anthropology. I, I minored in film. I thought I was going to be wow. a documentary filmmaker. And so you went um, all over the path. <laughs> yeah. I, and like never really thinking I'd be successful at anything. And, you know, I, I graduated from college and um, and I got a job as a receptionist at like at the most kind of important production company, you know, in the in the nineties in Los Angeles called Propaganda Films. You know, they were churning out, you know, incredible directors doing, you know, the most groundbreaking music videos and television commercials. And um, I was a receptionist for like two days until I was replaced by a British woman. And then, <laughs> um, but they floated me around. So I, you know, I, I worked a couple of days with Spike Jones. I worked with Mark Romanek. I worked with. Antoine Fuqua and then um, David Fincher needed an assistant, so I I went into work with David and and that was really successful. So I I, I lasted. I thought I was I would make feature films for a while mm-hmm. working with David, but um, he was so good, and I kind of realized I was never going to be that good at it. So I quit. <laughs> so how did the next step come about of you being a photographer? What really got you started? Well, so then I was kind of like, I was in my late twenties and I didn't know what I was going to do. So I sold everything I owned and, and bought a ticket to India. And I, I kind of spent a year backpacking around India and Nepal taking pictures. And so that wow. seemed, mm. and so and after that trip, I came back to New York and I needed a job. And a friend of mine got me a job assisting a photographer. And that was kind of my first experience mm-hmm. seeing photography as a career. And so I pursued that. I started working for many photographers. Like there's a whole network of assistants that you mm-hmm. meet and then you get a job with, you know, David LaChapelle or Terry Richardson or a catalog photographer for Victoria's Secret. And so I just started working with, with everyone. It was kind of like my apprenticeship. I wanted to learn on the job training. <laughs> yeah, it was the best kind. And yeah, absolutely. But I remember I was working with the photographer Matt Haranik, and he was doing travel and interiors, and that was the stuff I loved. Yeah. So you found your passion in a direction. So when did you started doing interiors and architecture? Did it come to you? It's like, okay, well, I'm good at this, and this is definitely my career path. And what really got you in the direction of being recognized as a interior and architectural photographer? You know, I mean, that was the weird part is that, like, that's what I wanted to do, but all of the editors in the world wanted me to, they, they looked at me the way I looked, and they're like, 
you're good. You're, you're a fashion photographer. So I was like, I could only get jobs doing fashion, which <laughs> I didn't love, but those were the gigs I was getting. Um, little gigs here and there. Um, but then yeah. I had a break when I was, when I was 35, um, I got a call from Harper's Bazaar magazine. A friend of mine was the photo director and she was like, we have a shoot with Diane von Furstenberg tomorrow, portraits of her at home. And the photographer dropped out. Can you do it? And we need to shoot digitally. This was like before digital was a thing. Right. right. I'd only been shooting like four by five film. And I was like, yeah, of course I can do it. No problem. And I hung <laughs> up the phone and I was petrified because I had never done anything like this. And it was Diane von Furstenberg and it was Harper's Bazaar. It was like the most important, like the most important fashion magazine in the world. And and but I showed up to the shoot and like I bluffed my way through it. I just like I <laughs> pretend I pretended to be the most confident like director and and I succeeded. Like I convinced, you know, Diane von Furstenberg that I was a fucking star. And you know, we did a whole series of portraits of her at her, her new home and her studio on 14th Street. And Glenda Bailey loved the film. Um, and I got kind of such a good report back that for the next almost 10 years, um, I shot for Harper's Bazaar every month. So every month I was in the well, I had like two to 14 pages, which was the most, inc like the most incredible exposure. It's like there was Harper's Bazaar, there was Vogue and there was W Magazine. And every month mm -hmm. my, my name was in the well with you know, the great, great, great photographers of the time. So I think by association, um, I got some notoriety. Right, right. Being at the right place at the right time, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it was really great. Like my, my, my yeah, just being like my, uh, my proximity to such greatness right. kind of, you know, it, I, I, I was able to bask in the glow of, of those guys. And, um, and that really helped. I was doing, you know, it was, it was kind of like the, this great kind of work, these like environmental portraits. I was doing a lot of stories. They were called a fashionable life. And I would have to go to some, you know, fancy fashionable woman's home and, and do these hyper stylized, you know, portraits of these women in their homes. And, you know, because mm -hmm. it was Harper's Bazaar, these portraits could have a sense of humor. They could be they could be elevated, you know, they didn't have to be so staid and serious. And, and we had right. so much fun doing these and, you know, we got to have so many exciting concepts, you know, Glenda was always available for like the most kind of insane ideas you could come up with. And, um, and we were able to execute because there was, so when, there was also you, a lot of money in publishing. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So after fashion, how did you get your first architectural interior? I was doing a lot of work with Bazaar and, and I, I really wasn't able to crack that, like the shelter magazine world. And a, a dear friend of mine, his name is Carlos Mota, you know, an incredible interior stylist and now interior designer and product designer. And, you know, 15 years ago, maybe 10 years, I don't know, 15 Margaret Russell was the editor in chief of Architectural Digest, and and so so Carlos called me. He goes, do you want to go to this this gala event with me tonight? I was supposed to go with Peggy Russell, but she can't go, so you can use her ticket. I was like, yeah, let's go. So Carlos and I went to this, you know, this gala event in New York City, and and the next day I I wrote Peggy a note on on my stationery, a thank you note, and sent it to. Um, the Condé Nast building and she called me the next week and she was wow. like thank you so much and like people never send personal notes anymore that was so kind of you it really you know, it, it, it resonated with me and um, and I think we should work together and then she assigned me my first project for AD wow which was Again, great perfect timing <laughs> and yeah, what was that yeah. uh, first project that I I, th I think it was shooting the apartment of Alex Hank, a, a, an art collector down in 
Tribeca, this incredible apartment that I was like, how it, it was such a nerve wracking shoot too. Cause you know, it's, <laughs> it's your first one. So it's like, it's like getting right. your first head. It's the most important thing. You never think it's going to be good enough. You, you're right, second right. guessing yourself the entire way, but you're, you know, pretending to be, you know, a confident. Right. Um, like I said, we're all, we're all our own worst critics. So yeah. I'm sure. Still am. Still so am. what, in, yeah. So yeah, absolutely. What inspire, what inspires you as a creative? Um, I, don't, I mean, I, I think it, I think it's just like, it, it, that changes daily. I, you know, there, I don't think there's anything. It's just everything I see every day is, you know, inspires me. Like the most mundane okay. things, you know, like right, right. honestly, like I was inspired, you know, a month ago when I was home in Marfa, Texas, like by, you know, li like literally by like a pack of Oscar Mayer bologna and some like white Wonder Bread. <laughs> I was just like, I was just so taken that's, by That's it. extreme. <laughs> I know, but I was like, I, and I just like, you know, I was like, oh my God, these colors are so beautiful. And like the packaging and all, it was, I don't know. So I was, I got lost in like that world for a little while. And <laughs> Stuck in a rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and then so, I mean, but so, so the inspiration can come from that. The inspiration I'm, you know, I'm sitting here in, you know, at the hotel in New York right now. And, you know, the, the, the city is full of, you know, smoke from these fires in Canada. But, you know, looking out the window right now, the, the whole city is this beautiful, beautiful, like soft silhouette. And the sun is kind of refracting through all this mist and haze and everything is so soft when normally it's so sharp. And this the shadows mm -hmm. are so soft. And the color of the light is so orange when it should be so kind of blue. And, and it's really beautiful. Almost an eerie effect, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. So, so when you uh, take on a project, what is your creative process and how do you work with an uh, architect or a designer? Um, I mean, I, I kind of, I, I, I like going in a bit blind, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if I don't see a scout, if I don't always speak to the designers, the architects about the project beforehand. Um, so to just to kind of go in and to walk into a space and just like attack it is super exciting, um, which is one way I do it. The other way is, is, you know, there'll be a conversation with the client um, a few weeks before, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look at a scout of the shoot. We'll, we'll talk about each room. I'll kind of make suggestions about what I think we need to, you know, to make the shoot successful visually. If we need to add accessories, I'll, you know, strongly suggest that they bring in um, a great, interior stylist to work with. Um, a lot mm -hmm. of designers, architects think that they can do it. And um, most of them, no offense to the people I work with, but most of them kind of can't do it because they don't have enough distance from their own work. So um, stylists, like, yeah, like stylists, like Anita Sarcidi or Michael Reynolds, like these great, great, great stylists in the industry, you know, they're, they, they work as, you know, with an editor's eye. And so they know how to kind of, you know, to remove and to add and to do the floral. So you find this perfect balance that, you know, expresses the work of, of the designer. Um, and, you know, and, you know, I work so well with the, a, a, with a specific team of stylists that, um, you know, we, you know, and I feel like that's the process to get the best work. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, because designers, can, you know, there's, they can be, they can have a sense of maybe nostalgia to certain pieces, like maybe that don't kind of work in the picture the way I feel it needs to be balanced. It's, it's all always a discussion, right. but, um, right. but you know, I've, anyway, so that, that process of getting, you know, the creative process of working with someone before the shoot and then, and then getting, getting on a shoot, um, is, you know, it's, I'm super collaborative. I kind of, you know, love kind of working with, with the whole team that's, that's on set, you know, with, with, with my assistant kit, with the stylist, with the designer, you know, discussing kind of, you know, I want everyone to kind of w to walk away, you know, feeling that, you know, they're getting what they, they need from the shoot. What motivates you while you're working and when you're not working? 
uh, coffee. Coffee motivates me. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think my, my, game my, my, a lot of a lot of coffee and <laughs> like lunch is a big motivator to get through the morning. Um, uh, I I think yeah. I'm, I I love my job. I I love going to work every single day. Um, whether I whether I love the projects I'm shooting or not, I I just I get a kick out of it. So um, I'm I'm just motivated by the the, the 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 sheer pleasure of being at work all day long. Is there a project that really stands out in your mind, either early in your career or now that you're most proud of, or is like <sighs> this one is my uh, my star. And and opposite of that, is there one like uh, I can never do that again? I mean, I, <laughs> I could answer. And there's there's no one star. Like there's there's always something that comes along, like in recent memory that just that is like that is such an incredible experience. We just spent, you know, we we just spent um, three weeks in Kona, Hawaii, with um, Nicole Hollis and Walker Warner Architects um, shooting the new uh, Kona Rosewood Resort. And that was just such a unique experience. You know, we were, we were living in this, you know, this luxury resort, you know, a month before it opened. So it was, it was fully functioning, but there were only, you know, seven of us on this deserted property. But wow. this like, unbelievable, you know, the most kind of, you know, perfect expression of, of like a Hawaiian, like, like it was so, and so that was like, who gets to do that? Like, you know, right, life was right. reduced to like, you know, waking up in the morning, you know, a sunrise swim, the gym, breakfast, and then shooting this beautiful, beautiful place, you know, with an incredible team of people. So you're just kind of shooting and creating and laughing all day long. And then, you know, sushi on the beach and an evening swim. And then you watch, a you know, half an hour of TV and then you're in bed by 830. It's just, and, you know, and do that for three weeks. It was kind of great. <laughs> not a bad life. Not a bad it was, life. No, it was, it was, they don't, these, and shoots like that don't come around very often, but that was one that, you know, it, that really kind of will stand out for a while as, as a, as a great shoot. Um, and an experience I would, I mean, an experience that I'll definitely never forget, but would never want to repeat was, was a shoot I did for Harper's Bazaar with, um, Faye Dunaway. Um, some years ago that I mean will go down as as like one of the most kind of like horrible yet <laughs> exciting experiences I've ever had because like Faye was really really and she's known she's root like known to be a very difficult person to work with and she was a very difficult very difficult person <laughs> to work with but you're also I've, like, I've heard you're stories. really excited because Faye Dunaway is like throwing hairbrushes at you and screaming at you. And I remember at one time I was like, I was taking her pictures. And she was like, come on, Friedman, you call yourself a photographer. I shot with People Magazine yesterday and the pictures are better than these. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is insane. Like <laughs> she's screaming. Like, and, and that was six hours. It was six hours of Faye Dunaway screaming at me, like endlessly wow. screaming at me and telling me how horrible I was. <laughs> yeah. That would stick out my mind for sure. You know, I was like, I was like taking her picture and I was like, Faye, Faye, it's so beautiful. It's beautiful. And she's like, shut up Friedman. I'm trying to concentrate. And so then I'm not saying a word. I'm taking her picture and she goes, come on Friedman, work with me. I can't do this on my own. So it was like that. <laughs> For hours and it went on like that until we were like shooting these like portraits at the Chateau Marmont pool and 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 I you know I wanted to kind of make her look like really heroic in this beautiful lighting and she was you know got me up on a 12 foot ladder with all the lights going because you know she wanted to be completely blown out and she wasn't happy and she came charging over to me and her foot caught on the cable of the the tether cord and the camera just went off the 12 foot oh, tripod and, fell in the swimming pool <laughs> and I got to end the shoot. <laughs> As someone was telling you <laughs> we're done. Yeah, like, that's, I mean, that was quite an experience. I mean, I'll never forget it. I would never want to relive it. 
And I've heard stories about her. Is mm-hmm. there one that you would want to go back to um, and say, you know, given that your time that you've been a photographer, it's like, oh, I have such great ideas. I want to redo this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, I don't know if I'm, well, I, I feel like, yeah, there is, there was, it was my, it was my first shoot. It was my first shoot for, for, um, for Martha Stewart's magazine. And it was one of my first shoots as a photographer and I was young and I was nervous and I was shooting four by five film and my assistant had loaded all of the film cartridges backwards. So oh, wow. on the two Oops. day shoot, <laughs> all of the film was black. Oh wow. Yeah. And so uh, was, artistic. <laughs> so it was and that was like, well, my career's over before it started. It was you know, and then I had no money and but I I had to offer to fund a reshoot, which when, you know, when you have no money and you know, you're looking at, you know, $5,000 in expenses to do a reshoot, it's, um, it's a, it's a big, yeah. I wish I could go back and not have to have those feelings. <laughs> <laughs> and hire a different assistant. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, <laughs> if I could remember who it was. But I can. Oh, uh, uh, no worries. So tell me why a boy from a boy from New York City is in Marfa, Texas. Have you been to Marfa? I have. have you, I have. You, so I mean, it, I don't know if Marfa doesn't resonate with everyone, but it re, it really resonated, and it was never again like falling into photography. I kind of just fell into Marfa, and you know, I went there about um, 11, 11 years ago. Um, for a visit just to see the art and Mm -hmm. it wasn't a terribly successful trip because it was July. It was hot. It was humid. It was raining. We got there on a Monday and a Tuesday, everything was closed. So, you know, so we didn't get to really experience much of the town. Um, But I loved it. I left Googling Marfa real estate and and I was just weirdly kind of enamored with this place. And, um, and then I, you know, I'd never heard of it before I went and then I went and then I couldn't stop hearing about it when I came back. So I felt like the universe was all of a sudden putting, putting this town in front of me. And, you know, I'd gone up to like two weeks afterwards, I'd gone up to Martha Stewart's house in Maine for her birthday. And, and Martha was like, Oh, I love Marfa. You know, we did a magazine there 20 years ago called Martha and Marfa. And my friend Trey Laird was like, oh, I, we're building a house in Marfa. And, you know, Stefano Tonki is like, we love Marfa and the art zone. So everyone's talking about how incredible <laughs> it was. So I got kind of swept up in that conversation and and went back a few, like two months later in October. And, um, and you know, by the end of that weekend, I, you know, I'd owned, bought a 10 acre piece of land on at the end of a dirt road just outside of town. And that kind of started that process. So is it now your Zen place or is it your full-time home? It's been my full-time home for eight years. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's, I left New York eight years ago, became a Texan and, um, (laughs) it's a very exciting place to vote. Yes. (laughs) True. True. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful place. It has a eeriness to it, but also a tranquility. And I think it's just a, um, a livable art just by the sheer topography of it. It's yeah. an amazing. And place. And the, the creative energy there is incredible. It's so, I mean, there's so there's, I love that there's just always, there's a new wave of, of young people coming in that, that feel this pioneering spirit and they want to, they want to create things. They want to, they want to make art. They want to sell something. They want to share something. They want to cook something. They want to open a new store. Like they're just, there's so many, they don't always last. I, I applaud the people for their, their, the courage to do it. Um, right. And the ones that kind of make it and stick around for five or six years, you know, it's, it, it, it fuels this fire there. It's, it's just so exciting. And, you know, and so, you know, it, you can have a very, very active social life there or 
you know, you could not see anyone and, and kind of just like right. live on at the edge. <laughs> Turn everything was, off and be quiet. Yeah. It's, it's, and you know, and I have this, this piece of land at the end of a road, you know, with very few neighbors, you know, and it's, just, it goes on forever and it's so peaceful and I, d I could never give it up. That's good. So I, I know you have tattoos. I can see them. And for the guests that can't see them, what got you interested in uh, body art? Um, I was always curious. I think I was always curious about it. And I think because I was told my entire life that I wasn't allowed to have one always made me want <laughs> one. And, um, and when I was 35, I thought, I'm going to have one. I'm going to do it. And so I, I spent like months agonizing over a design. Was, you know, oh my God, this is so important. What's this tattoo going to be? It's, and, um, and so the first one was a real, you know, challenge to, to kind of, to commit to. And, and once I did all the others just kind of like, Oh, I guess I'll, I'm going to get a piece of steak or I'm going to get a weird clown <laughs> smoking a joint or a teddy bear with Like then the ideas could just be, like random and stupid and it, it's you know it's 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 a great it's been an amazing hobby and a diversion and a practice and then you know getting tattoos you know i get them while i'm when i'm on the road so you know it encourages me to go to a different part of town to meet some interesting people it's you know the 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 kind of the journey to find an interesting tattoo artist and see what they do so it mm -hmm. just kind of opens up another you know a possibility for for that day. Do you know prior to going that to that artist, what you're going to have or is it on the Some, moment type thing? Sometimes, sometimes it's yeah. usually on the moment. And then, you know, cause you want to see what that artist can do that you've kind of been randomly assigned to. So you're like, Oh, right. Okay. Demonic Mickey mouse that let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that one. Do you have a demonic Mickey Mouse? <laughs> I do. He's right there. Ah, there you go. The proof is there. <laughs> so what is on your list of things you want to achieve as a creative that you haven't done yet? Oh, uh, gosh. I've, you know, it's, I, 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 I'm, I'm I'm kind of good. Like I'm I'm really into what I'm doing. Like I'm I'm I I still love being a photographer. I've started um directing recently, maybe not so recent, but I I I'm really enjoying directing. So I'm gonna explore that a little bit more now. I you know, I did a national my first national television commercial for Kohler Toilets recently, um, which um which is which was really, which was, which was so much fun to do and so exciting mm -hmm. and so challenging. And, you know, we worked so hard on that and, you know, those efforts are being rewarded and, you know, where we're, you know, going up for uh, some awards, which is great, which has kind of encouraged me to kind of pursue that. Um, so I don't, again, I, I don't think I'll kind of go full circle back in like, and want to direct a feature film, but, um, I could get Almost into there. some directing. Almost. Yeah, I could get into some directing yeah. now. So when you go into a shoot and the stylist has had set everything, set everything set up, do you see the first image you want to take? Do you see? Oh, it I doesn't guess, work that way. It come alive? No. It doesn't. Okay. That, the stylist <laughs> doesn't go early and set everything up. No, I, I I think that um that just makes it. No, we go in together. The stylist, we go into we we walk into the room. We're like, okay, this is the sh like this is the shot. We kind of, and then and then everything is styled to like we we style it together. It's it's a it's a it's a collaborative effort to, you know, and it starts with the big things, you know, like we'll move the furniture and you know once the big things feel like they're in place, then you know this the next size down, then the pillows, then the books, then the accessories, then you know, and eventually it gets down to like. It, well, if we just get rid of that flower petal and move that half an inch to the right, there we go. 
and um, we kind of circle the drain until it gets to like the minutia. And then that picture, and again, it's like, you know, I work with some, you know, some stylists who are, we, we see the world in, in a very similar way. So, you mm-hmm. know, we, we get to that point, you know, it's all, it's always so interesting that we're both like, yep, yeah, that's the last thing that needs to move. Let's just kind of, you know, just get rid of that one book and then, then we're good to go. <laughs> we usually both see that at the same time at the end. Do you like the uh, architects or the interiors designers influence or do you wait until after the shoot is done and kind of a review everything with them? Um, no, it's, 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 for me, it's important that it can, it's not like it's my vision. It's, you know, it's like, I, 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 mm. I'm always, I'm always kind of appreciative that a designer and architects likes the way I, I see the world. So I know I'm being kind of brought in because of my point of view. Um, whatever that balance is that I see. Um, but it's so important for me that I'm getting the things that they need out of the shoot. So, you know, if, if an architect needs specific things captured, I, I want to know what those are. Um, if they're on the shoot, then I'm going to work closely with them. Um, if they're not on the shoot, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll share the work as we're going. Again, it's, you know, it's, it's a collaborative process. I don't, I don't think it's, you know, I need to be kind of like left on my own to do what I do and then mm-hmm. surprise them with, with, with the images. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you, you, listen, you, you want to make sure everyone walks away with, again, with, with, with the job having been, you know, accomplished successfully. True. And, Very true. You know, because I, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, someone will say like, oh, oh, if you can't shoot that because it's too difficult. I was like, what? Like, is that a challenge? Then it's, <laughs> you know, Not every shot's easy. Some of them are like technically some of those pictures are like are challenging. Like it's a, like your brain is exhausted after 40 minutes of trying to, you know, light a, you know, a black room with, you know, velvet furniture, you know, and it's backlit by, you know, the bright white curtains. It's just like, fuck, this is hard. (laughs) So given that you're in a creative visual uh, industry, do you have your own design aesthetic? Um, it's, it's broad. I think (laughs) think when my, my house in Marfa was published in AD, it was in the eclectic design issue. So, um, (laughs) I was like, Oh, okay. My taste is considered to be eclectic. Um, I don't have, I don't know if I have, if I, if I have something like, you know, when you look at the work of like Stephen Gambrell, like, like there's a, 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 there's a, there's, he's got his look, his vibe, it's his thing. It's very Mm -hmm. specific, very, very beautiful. And what Martin Ballard does is so incredible. And so like, you can really identify Martin's work. My, I think that, that you can see that in my photography, but you can't see that in my design aesthetic it's again it's broad it's like you know the house Mm -hmm. i built in in marfa texas and put together is it's eclectic it's but but it's it's a point of view and it's 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 great and you know i'm about to renovate a house in long island um and it's it's gonna i'm i'm not the driving force behind it you know stephen gambrell is and marcus zimka the architect and you know and so you know, it, it's it's going to have a more specific point of view than, say, what I've done in the past. Gotcha. So it's going to be more geared toward the location. Yeah, more geared toward the location and more geared towards you know what's what Stephen Gambrell's eye and his that point of view. So you mm-hmm. know, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of step back and and you know let someone else kind of you know, steer this one. Fantastic. So you got some, uh, items coming up this fall. You got two books coming out. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about both of those? Uh, it's very exciting. Um, they're both, they're, and they're so different. The, fir- the first book, I'm, I'm really, really proud of these two books. Um, the first book was a, as a project I've been working on for years with, um, a designer, Martin Lawrence Ballard, um, who is, 
I mean, this incredible force who's worked with everyone from Cher to all the Kardashians, Elton John, Sylvester Stallone, RuPaul, you name it, Martin, Ellen Pompeo. And Martin has a book coming out called Star Style. And so it's, it's, it's a collection of the work that Martin and I have done together over the years of, um, of celebrity homes. You know, RuPaul's house was just featured in Architectural Digest, Ellen Pompeo, Winnie Harlow. Like it's, it is, it is a, it is a glamorous, glamorous book. It is like (laughs) Martin's not holding back. And so, and that's, no, it's, and it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful book. I'm so proud of it. So that's coming out in the fall. And, um, and the other book um, is, and it's such a different process that like, cause that book was over years and it was just, a, it's a collection of projects that we've done um, that have been assembled for this book. And, and the second book is called behind the blue door. Um, and it's about um, one home. It's about the townhouse of John Dempsey in New York city and his like un unbelievable collection of, of art and, um, sculpture in this and photography in this and crammed into this house. It is, it is so kinetic. It is so, it's so wild. There's so much, it's, it's a headache. It's, there's so much to look at. And, and this book, we had one week. So I spent one week with um, my assistant Kit Sinclair and stylist Mika Tenhave. And we spent, yeah, we spent a week in John's house and we shot an entire 200 page book and it was a massive amount of work. And it was such an incredible experience to, to be so committed to a process and, and, um, and to do it so quickly. Well, that must be, and that they both come out this fall. Both they both come out in October. A lot, I have a, I have a lot of, a lot of pages to sign. <laughs> are you going to do the book tour thing <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna do it I, I, we're gonna we have two books yeah. to promote so i mean i still have to find time to work and renovate a house um <laughs> a lot of juggling people, it's gonna be a lot of juggling but it's gonna be so much fun the books are they're, they're both so beautiful and they're so different and um i'm i'm really proud of the work for, for both of them so have you gotten the bug to actually maybe do another book, a third book about all your work? I, I'm not ready. To, I'm not no? ready for that book. No, I'm not ready for that book yet. There, you know, there, there, I, there are ideas, there are ideas. And I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm ready to kind of publish the collection of, of, of work. I, I mm-hmm. think before that there's, there's some ideas I have of, of specific like books that I want to, I want to shoot specifically as a book, as opposed to a collection of past works to put together into a book. And again, it's like, you know, the, the, the shooting behind the blue door was, was such a unique experience because, you know, we were able to do it in a week. Um, mm-hmm. Most books take months and months and months of, and it, you know, at, exactly, at yeah. great expense to, because, you know, the, the way that, the way that I work, the way that I shoot, you know, it, it, you know, I, it's me and it's me and my assistant and, uh, you know, it, it's a lot of, it's, it's a lot of kind of, you know, compl- not complicated, but we're really specific about how we light things and, you know, the, the vibe that we want to achieve. So, you know, we, we work hard on, on each image to get it perfect. So, and that doesn't well, not happen with the book. Oh, well, let me ask you this. Is there a Douglas Friedman style or set style when you for, uh, shoot? Yeah, there, there is. I mean, when I was younger, I didn't know what it was. So, and I wanted to figure it out. And I remember not looking at magazines because I didn't want to think that I was being heavily influenced by any one photographer. And, um, but I realized after a few years that, that I saw the world in a very specific way that, you know, things Mm -hmm. felt, a picture felt balanced. It felt right. 
at, in, at some arbitrary moment. So I, I learned, you know, that I have a, that there was a point of view and then that was kind of, um, confirmed over and over by, by people who would say they could recognize my work. They could, they could tell that it was a photograph I had taken by its composition or its, its richness or its color or its depth mm -hmm. or its shadow. And, and so that was, that was a really nice, that was a, an affirming thing to hear that, um, that, that there was a point of view that I had that was, that was recognizable. Um, so I think no matter how I try and alter that, it always goes back to, it just ends up being what, what I see. It just happens. So <laughs> just magically happens. <laughs> it's just, yeah. It's, it, honestly, it's, it's like, it's a feeling. It's like an instinct. It's like, right. I can try and force uh, something else. Sometimes it works to get out yeah. of my comfort zone. Like sometimes I know there's an editor, Cynthia Frank that I work with who is like she's the one who will su like suggest and push for me to try something that I'm like, I don't know. I don't see it. And then I'll do it. And I'm like, Oh, you know, thank you, Cynthia, for helping me see that, which I couldn't see before. And so she's opened my eyes up to, um, to seeing the world in a new way. And, um, so I try, but you know, the, the, the formula, the recipe is, is there. And I've tried to deviate mm -hmm. from it. And the work doesn't feel right. And I end up having to go back to just what I feel is right. What's the hardest thing to shoot? I mean, a, 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 like a black room with velvet furniture. Yeah. <laughs> it just, <laughs> yeah, that must have, that must have been it's, recent. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's the one that's always like, no, not that, like that room, like black walls and like a white couch. You're like, fuck, it's just, it's so, there's just this, the contrast is so hard. Um, it's, you know, you know, what's difficult to shoot are like glass houses, glass boxes are difficult to shoot. Um, you know, pieces of glass have gotten so big and they're so thick and they're so green. So there's this crazy color shift that the camera picks up and overcompensates for. And there's so much glass and there's so little, like, negative fill that there's there's no shadows there's no depth pictures are flat so you know you're coming up with strategies and solutions to create the depth and to create the shadow and you know and to negatively fill an image so there's to correct the colors that's so messed up by the thickness of the glass and those those are the like challenging challenging things to shoot for me is there something that you want to shoot or you haven't yet that's on your on your list or someone that you would like to work with? Um yeah, I mean there's 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 a list of of architects and designers that um that I admire whose whose work I think is beautiful um that I'd that I'd love to work with. Um and and then I'm I'm it's actually nice I I get to work with designers and architects who I, I haven't heard of. Um, and then I, and then whose work I love. I'm like, Oh, so that introduction is always exciting for me. Fantastic. So what are you most surprised about on your journey or about yourself since you started this, this creative path? It's like, wow. That, <laughs> that I managed to like kind of get good at it. <laughs> Yeah. Like I told you in the beginning, I never thought I would amount to much. I was very kind of insecure and unsure that I would ever have a career. I never thought I would own a home. I never thought I would like, you know, make money or, you know, or be, you know, <laughs> secure. I ne Honestly, I never thought. And so it's kind of like, wow, okay, this is kind of cool. You know, I get to do what I love and, you know, and there's yeah. some success at it and... Um, you know, I, I get to kind of now, you know, I get to build a life, which is exciting. Travel and do all sorts of things. Yes. Yeah. I get to travel. I get to, I get to teach, I get to build and create. And, you know, I, I had, I, it was such an amazing experience to, you know, the photography, photography is interesting. 
you know, one of the reasons I didn't want to make feature films was I just, I didn't have the, I didn't think I had the, the kind of, I would be able to commit to like three years on one project. I mean, David Fincher would work on a project for years. They'd be in development, you know, these movies he would do took forever. And so photography is great for me because you're on a shoot for two days and then you're on to the next job. Mm -hmm. Um, But building that house in Marfa, that's, that's been 10 years and, you know, maybe that's kind of done now. And so that was so exciting to commit to something, to work so hard and, to be so dedicated to one project and a vision for 10 years. And, and I'm really excited to do that again with, um, with another house and to kind of focus my energies there. Is it going to take 10 years? <laughs> no, no, I, I've given no? myself, no, 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 no. I mean, that was, Marfa was, there was no plan. It was just like, Oh, let's do this now. It was like, now there's a plan. There's a there's a specific plan. I've, I've made a lot of mistakes with that house in Texas. Um, so I'm going to try and do this to work on this house and be smarter about it. More adult. I'm going to be more adult about it. More. <laughs> so when is your Zen time? When is the time you just shut off the phone and just relax? Airplanes. Yeah. Yeah. Airplanes. Airplanes. Is when I relax in mm. airports. <laughs> oh, it seems rather <laughs> airports with all the people I, around. I, I don't, I don't like, I don't love, I don't love sitting on a beach. No? I don't, oh. no, don't love it. I get a little anxious. I kind of, I like to be doing things. So, you know, so, you know, it's, it's like, again, like shooting in Hawaii or like shooting in Aspen. It's, it's almost like mm-hmm. a vacation for me. You know, I get to spend the day in a beautiful place, looking at an incredible view, like making pretty things with interesting people, having great conversations, have a couple of good meals, like check out, explore a new town, and then, you know, sleep in a nice hotel. And then... Not a bad know, life? <laughs> not, it's not bad, yeah. Is there anything in the next 10 years you want to achieve? I'd As a, like, a creative or just in you? personal life <laughs> like get to retirement <laughs> like maybe slow down a little <laughs> bit i don't know or feel like or maybe like maybe i want to achieve this the need the comfort to be okay sitting on a beach reading a book for an afternoon like maybe that's what i'd like to achieve i get it I, i'm not one to sit on a beach and just relax and to tune cook. Out. i'd love to learn to cook i can't do that yeah no, everything turns into stew. I know I try and cook. <laughs> one pot, a one pot kind of guy. That's what I was like, how did that happen? But it's stew. <laughs> Douglas, what's what's next for you? What else is uh, coming up besides the two books this fall? A lot of travel, a lot of work, a lot of travel. Um, you, it's which is which is great, which is always exciting. You know, as a, as a freelancer, um, you're always you know it's always exciting that you know there's a, there's always a little bit of fear in the back of your mind that you're never going to work again, which kind of keeps you hustling and moving and grateful for the work. So it's it's nice that you know you know there, that there's work into the fall now and exciting work, like great right. projects. Again, I'm so lucky I get to work with truly the the greatest, you know, designers of our time right now. And, um, and so, and some of these projects are, you know, I'm finishing up a a book with Nicole Hollis, which will come out in 2024. So that's been like a marathon of incredible, like incredible work, like, like work Mm -hmm. that you can't believe a human being, you know, lives in, you know, these projects that she does are like, you know, spaceships or museums, you know, incredible stuff and she's out of san francisco correct he's out of san francisco yeah yeah so how far in advance are you booked are you booked like years in advance or not years but you know we're we're booked into october now so which is it's it's a it's always it's a nice cushion to have right right like you said you're always afraid of who's going to call next or having to knock on doors so uh, I well, get I, that. I, again, I, yeah, nice. it's, it's something that you don't do alone. I'm, you know, for the first time now at, at 50, I have 
I've, I have an incredible, I have an incredible team of people that I work with. You know, my, 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 my work is at a level that it's never been at. Cause I, I get to work with my assistant, uh, my assistant kit, um, who uh, brings a whole new, di- like another dimension to the work that I do. i um, in such a positive way. He's, he's, like he's he's so strong and he's so supportive and on top of it like his commitment to my process allows me to get so much more committed to like the minutia of the lighting and the digital work and then and my my agent Carrie um an art department who I've never I've never had an agent as kind of um as creative as um committed as concerned as kind um, as 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 Carrie is, you know, it's it's so nice to hear. Like she's like she's got my back, and she knows she like she, like we talk ten times a day, and um, and she uh, and every client loves her. So she's just like this this unicorn in the business. <laughs> and like, like both both Kit and Carrie um, are are so so great that you know it it kind of allows me to kind of work at a very kind of high level at an incredible pace and not be exhausted. Right. Right. It's nice to have those, uh, as you said, uh, unicorns in your life to help push you along and take care of you and be a part of, uh, the process. You mentioned that you're a freelancer. You never wanted to be a staff photographer. No, I mean, there was some talk some years ago about like a, maybe, you know, going on contract with Hearst or, um, but it, those things kind of stopped happening, you know, as I was kind of finding my success, you know, the, the, the business was right. changing. Um, and I enjoy the freedom yeah. of kind of calling yeah, all the I shots and making the choices that I want to make. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Douglas, we're almost at our hour point. Is there anything else you want to talk about, bring up and share with us? I mean, I feel like I've, I've, you got it all out of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. <laughs> You've got That's everything. You've got I hope it was, I hope it was, I mean, there was something interesting there. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, is there any um, words of wisdom or comments that you'd like to share? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I just feel like it's so important that you like what you do. That you enjoy it and I think it's um yeah I think that's the most important thing like if, if I didn't enjoy my my job I don't think that I would be doing a very good job at it and maybe I'm lucky I don't know I worked so hard I don't think I'm lucky I worked really really hard to get to where I am I still work really really hard so I don't want to be apologetic about um having success. And I certainly don't want to be apologetic about loving what I do because it was a struggle. It was like a struggle until I was like 35 before I was like, oh, phew, figured it out. <laughs> you, you made it. You made it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Douglas, uh, congratulations on your new place and best of luck. Thank you. Um, and hopefully Great. one of these days we can sit down and have a martini. <laughs> I know I owe you a few because getting to this point today, I was a <laughs> Oh, Gina, my apologies. No worries. I have an erratic Hendrix schedule. Hendrix gin, dirty, yep. blue cheese olives. That's I oh, like well, it. Sir. Yeah, Tito's with the blue cheese, three blue like, cheese olives. Yeah, that that's it. That's the perfect mix. Absolutely. I, I sometimes bring them to the bar with me. Really? Yeah. It, yeah. It's very it's hard happened. to find a. Yeah. It's, it's like they can make it. They can stuff the cheese in there. It's it's an easy task. <laughs> Well, sir, it's been a pleasure, and thank you so much. Uh, Enjoy your summer, and we will chat soon. Thank you so much. It was great chatting with you. You too, Douglas. Douglas.